for so many people that are young, they don't realize there's so much. I mean, even if it's just the office job, still, there's so much opportunity because the world treats you differently right. when you're 19 and have come from somewhere else. Right. But then after maybe even mid-20s, it just changes because it's not seen as like the young ingenue. Right. So is it a process you think a lot of people, once they stay in this town, they begin to realize and change themselves? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think, um, I call it the LA machine. You cannot, or the Hollywood machine, no one escapes it. You know, no one escapes it. Everybody goes through the same exact thing. It's the same exact story. It's like uh, when we spoke about my big break and about, uh, you know, all of us actors living in that one house together. Um, now it's some other young actors and, 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 and that are coming to town. And so it's like everybody has the same story, just tells it differently. Everybody has the same obstacles in this town, maybe just a little bit different. You know, it's where, you know, my story was about my looks and, you know, I wasn't good looking enough or, or you know, he's not a leading man, you know. And then I had my buddy who was very, very good looking and getting the complete opposite where you're too good looking. <laughs> You know, like, well, where, what, what do you guys want? You know, so you put up a, with a lot of that in this industry, and it's tough. It's tough, you know. Uh, no one wants to hear um, exactly how you look. <laughs> you know, this, uh, this, this industry is very honest. And, and, and now, at 40 years old, I know who I am. I know where I fit in. I'm okay with playing a, com a computer geek. Whereas before, you know, when I was young, I took it personally. Um, I took it very personally because in my mind, I thought I was Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Maybe that was a little bit, bit of a delusion in myself, but that's how I had to see myself in order just to like do it. And then I started getting all this computer geek roles and I'm like, but I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not that guy. And then over time, I had to realize, well, that's my wheelhouse. And that's, those are the roles that are coming towards my way. And, and, and now I embrace everything, you know, it's not, about being a leading man and about being this particular actor. It's about being you and being and, and, and knowing what you bring to the table and what you're good at. And um, I feel like I've, after all this time, realized, you know, what I am good at and, and, and looking forward to being challenged now that I'm 40 and, and uh, grown into myself. I, I'm looking for that next next challenge. Are you OK with being a sexy paranormal investigator? <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that works for me. Yeah. Okay, no. And, and again, you know, uh, <laughs> now, you know, when people ask me what I do, uh -huh. I say I'm an actor and I'm a paranormal investigator. This is two uh, two things that I take very very seriously, and um, and it's worked out. It's worked out in, in both realms. So realms. Um, so um, I feel very fortunate uh, to be where I'm at and, and and to have worked like I have and uh, like like we talked about, it doesn't happen for everybody, and it's. It's scary. Well, I mean, not everybody has the ability to like themselves or love themselves because of some label, whether it's even true or not, that right. someone else in power has put on them. Right. Have you been able to come to that place? And what advice do you have to, for other people? I mean, just as a woman, I know there's so much pressure, whether it's looks, weight, whether you're married or not. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of women don't love themselves. And I'm sure it's interesting to hear that men go through it too. Yeah. That's, that's kind of a shocker for me. I didn't yeah. realize it. But how do you come to terms with loving yourself no matter what the label is someone puts on you, what, even if it's not true, the label they're putting on you? I think it's tough. I think it's, I think it's tough. The number one thing, a hard thing to do is to love yourself. I think, I think, I think we need to learn at a young age, maybe, you know, we really need to practice that, loving ourselves and not, you know, pointing the finger at ourselves and saying, you know, you did this wrong and you did this wrong because we have plenty of people saying that in this town. Um, so I, I don't know. I think it's a daily work. I think it's daily work because I have those days where I'm like, ah, you know, you were terrible. And then you have those days where you're like, oh, you were amazing, you know, so uh, it's a daily work, and I think it's not just for women. I think it's for men, too. Um, I, think, I think we're all insecure in this town to some degree, in a, a little bit, you know, and it's how do we deal with that? How do we try to fill ourselves up with something positive? So. I noticed, too, it seems like there's either 
total self-hatred of oneself in this town or total self-love. <laughs> There's right. like very little gray area. Right. It's so true. It is. It's, it, it is true. There's a lot of self-hatred or there's a lot of like way too much self-loving going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, okay, come back down to, right. to everybody else. Um, yeah, you're right. There is no in-between. And I think if we can find a way to sort of be in that in-between and have a healthy ego as well as loving ourselves, I think that's a good combination to have.